We're going to talk about the principle of cooperation, because your ability to get along with others will determine your success in life more than any other single factor. Some years ago, the Carnegie Institute of Technology analyzed 10,000 employees who were let go from their positions over a period of seven years. They found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to work well with others. 85% of all the problems you will ever have in life will involve other people. The very best way is to practice the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Practice the law of sowing and reaping. If you want people to be cooperative with you, you must be cooperative with them. Treat everyone with courtesy, kindness, and patience. Remember, every person you meet is carrying a heavy load. If you practice self-discipline and have a clear sense of purpose, if you are good at what you do and accept complete responsibility for your actions, if you strive to serve others with what they want and concentrate on your highest payoff activities, you will tend to be a positive, self-confident individual and you will have no trouble getting along. Your power in business, industry or politics will always be determined by who you can call upon for help and assistance. You build your power base by seeking out every opportunity to assist others with no immediate expectation of return. Of course, this strategy presupposes that you are excellent at what you do. You can only build power within an organization of value to the degree to which you are excellent at what you do. If you attempt to build a power base to compensate for a lack of excellence, what will happen is that it will just be perceived as cheap politics. And it will seldom work out. You will always do better with a plan than without. So prepare, prepare, prepare. The power is always on the side of the person with the most knowledge and the best notes and the most thorough preparation. In interacting with others, a key to cooperative relationships is to be a good listener. Here are some keys to effective listening. By the way, most people are very poor at listening, and if you become just a little bit better, you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in your interactions with others. Listen without thinking at the same time of what you're going to say. As soon as a speaker takes a breath, listen quietly, patiently, and calmly, without interrupting or attempting to interrupt. If you allow three to five seconds to pass before you respond, you will be conveying to the other person very clearly that you are carefully considering the other person's remarks and you are avoiding the risk of interrupting. One other advantage to pausing is that psychologists tell us that you hear better when you pause before replying because the words that the other person has said soak in, if you like, and you get a better understanding of what the other individual actually means. Feed it back in your own words to make it clear to the other that you fully understand and you've been listening carefully. Remember, in conversation, the person who asks questions has control. All open-ended questions cannot be answered by yes or no. Examples are what, where, when, who, why, and how. These are all questions that encourage the person to expand on the subject. In building cooperative relationships, practice the law of indirect effort. The law of indirect effort says that in our relationships with others, we almost invariably get what we want more rapidly by indirect means rather than by direct means. There is nothing that will so impress another than for you to be impressed by them, because then the other person will become very interested in who you are and will respect your judgment and your discernment. Another example of the law of indirect effort is if you want others to be interested in you, be interested in them. If you want others to like you, like them. If you want other people to respect you, then respect them. If you want others to believe in you, believe in them. If you want to have a friend, be a friend. The law of indirect effort is the key to effective relationships with other people. Now here is an extension. Here are some of the keys to cooperative human relations, and they all start with acceptance. Acceptance means accepting the other person unconditionally for exactly who they are without judgment and without reservation. Acceptance or rejection is something that takes place with every interaction. And we are attuned from childhood to be very alert to whether or not we are accepted or rejected by others in social interaction. And the finest and simplest way to express acceptance is in a conversation, is simply to smile. Whenever we smile at another person, it not only puts them at ease and raises their self-esteem, but when you smile, it releases endorphins in the brain and gives you a feeling of well-being and contentment. Another key to cooperation is appreciation. I think the two most beautiful words in any language are thank you. Please and thank you will get you just about anywhere you want to go. And one of the best things that you can do to build self-esteem in your children is to say thank you to them for everything they do for you. 
And one of the best things that you can do to build a happy home is to say thank you to your spouse for everything they do, small or large, around the house. Another key to cooperative human relations is approval and praise, which is to acknowledge and recognize when people do things, and when they do things well. Some of the keys to approval and giving approval are, first of all, be sincere. Never express approval unless you believe it, unless you actually genuinely feel that the individual has done something that is praiseworthy. Another key to approval is to be immediate. If somebody does something, give them the praise immediately afterwards. Praise delayed is usually praise that has no effect at all. If you would like to develop a habit in another person, praise continuously until the habit is developed. If you would like to maintain the habit, then praise intermittently afterwards. In other words, praise the person every second or third time they do it to maintain the habit in place. Another key to cooperative human relations is admiration. Abraham Lincoln said, Everybody likes a compliment. And the two things that you can quite safely compliment people on are their traits or their possessions. People are very proud of their personal traits. Compliment people on their possessions. Praising a person's children, praising a person's house, or praising a person's clothes, furniture in their house or in their office, will always be greeted well by the other person. It raises the other person's self-esteem and makes them far more receptive to working cooperatively with you. And finally, agreeability. Be agreeable. Be an agreeable person. Be the sort of person that people like to have around because you are not argumentative or difficult. And even if you disagree, ask yourself always, how important is this? And if it's not important, let it pass. One of the characteristics of people that we always enjoy is that they smile. They say thank you. They praise and approve our behaviors and actions. They admire our possessions. And they're agreeable. And they're easy to get along with. Remember this. That in business and in industry and in all organizations in our society today, all work is done by teams. And your ability to work well on a team and your ability to build an effective team to get the job done is going to determine your success as much as any other single factor. So here are some keys to encourage teamwork. Number one, make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make it clear that everybody on the team knows what the goals or objectives of the team are. Make sure that everybody knows why you are trying to accomplish it. What is the reason? What is the purpose? Who will be affected? And how much? People will go a long way to help you achieve the what if they know the why. Make sure everyone knows exactly what they are expected to contribute individually. Give ample praise and recognition for performance. The basic rule with regard to team building is to give lots of praise and recognition in public. Give criticism and constructive feedback in private. Personally accept 100% responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Take the blame and share the glory. Exceptional executives are always those who, if a person does not do the job, accept that it is their responsibility of having put the person in the job in the first place. Remember, people make mistakes, and it often happens that you will put a person in a job for which they are not suited. If that's the case, it is not the person's fault. It is the fault of the executive who put them in that position, and it is the responsibility of the executive to remove them. Never criticize, condemn, or complain. It lowers morale and robs people of self-esteem. Remember, everything that you do that makes other people feel good about themselves boosts your own self-esteem and makes you a more dynamic, successful person. The real key to cooperative human relations is to treat everyone as though they were the most important person in the world, a million-dollar customer. And, as I said earlier, your ability to get along with others, your ability to function well on teams, your ability to work well in meetings and to cooperate effectively with other human beings more than anything else, determine the height to which you will rise in your field or industry. Thank you. An ingredient that is missing from most of the success formulas out there today. Without this magic ingredient, your dreams and goals fall flat. But with this magic ingredient, you can accomplish anything and everything you want, and it's called self-discipline. There are several disciplines that you need to develop if you want to achieve your full potential. The first discipline of all is the discipline of clear thinking. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your decisions and choices. Your decisions and choices determine the actions you take, and the actions you take determine your results. Your results determine the quality of your life. Peter Drucker said, You need to take time to think. Fast decisions are usually wrong decisions, especially fast decisions involving people or money. So, 
If you're going to make a decision that has long-term consequences, then you have to give it a lot of thought. You have to look at it from every single side and think about it carefully. The more carefully you think about a decision, the better the quality of that decision will be when you finally make it. One of the very best ways that you can develop the discipline of clear thinking is to sit in solitude for 30 to 60 minutes when you have a major problem or issue in your life. You'll start to calm down and all the fidgetiness will disappear. It's almost like a bucket full of silty water. If you leave it sit there for a while, the water goes completely clear. At a certain point, ideas will start to come as you're writing out all the details. Sometimes, exactly the right choice pops out at you. It becomes clear, but you would not have triggered that superconscious solution if you hadn't taken the time to think on paper. Aristotle once said that wisdom, which is the greatest of all human desires, is the ability to make good decisions. Here's the key to good thinking. Be open to doing something completely different. Clear thinking is the first discipline. It is the discipline practiced by the most successful, happiest, and wealthiest people in our society. The second major discipline is the discipline of daily goal setting. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly. Follow these four steps. Write and rewrite your goals each morning, review them in the evening, and ask yourself two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? What would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you ask yourself those two questions in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you did in the last six months. Every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your subconscious mind. When you program them into your subconscious mind, you set up a field of vibration within your brain. This law of attraction, based on this field of vibration, attracts into your life people and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. The third discipline is the discipline of courage. Mark Twain said, Do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. Fear and courage tend to be habits. If you're afraid and you give in to the fear and you back away, it becomes a habit to back away whenever you're afraid or unsure. If you're afraid and you force yourself to confront the fear, it becomes a habit to confront the fear. Whenever you find something that you're afraid of, you'll find that most fears disappear when you confront them. You realize that the fear was in your own mind. Identify one fear situation in your life today and use that as your challenge. Use that as your test case. Once you've done that, you'll look up and you'll be a different person for the rest of your life. You'll know that nothing that you're afraid of can stop you. The fourth discipline is the discipline of daily time management. Disciplining yourself to plan your day thoroughly before you begin will save you at least 10 minutes for every minute you spend in planning. According to research, it will increase your productivity by 25 to 50 percent, maybe even double your productivity. For every day that you plan, begin the discipline of daily time management by making a list. The very best time to make this list is the night before. If you do this, then your subconscious mind works on your plan all night long, and you often wake up in the morning with great ideas to implement your plan. Organize your list by priority. You'll get twice as much done on any day when you start and complete your major task first thing than any other day. When you have the self-control, self-mastery, and self-discipline to start and complete your most important task, you just feel fabulous about yourself. The fifth discipline is the discipline of regular saving and investing. Savings today are what guarantee the security and the possibilities of tomorrow. The first corollary of the law of saving and becoming a money-saving expert comes from the book The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. It is to pay yourself first. Begin today to save 10% of your earnings off the top and never touch it. This is your fund for long-term financial accumulation, and you never use it for any other reason except to assure your financial future. Many people start by saving 10% of their income and then graduate to saving 15, 20, and even more, and their financial lives change dramatically as a result, and so will yours. The sixth discipline is the discipline of continuous learning. What takes you from rags to riches is personal development. Peter Drucker says, Knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century, and the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills, because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. So, if you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. Here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one, read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. Turn off the television, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. 
Read books. The best-selling books written by the most successful people in your field. Because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level, to get much better results than you could before. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can, the courses and seminars that are available to you in your field, that are given by professionals, that are courses that have been developed over years and years and years. They have been tested and tested and tested. The person who is talking to you for several hours has spent thousands of hours learning their subject. They have dry tested this or done test runs with thousands of other people. When you take a course, you can learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years, or maybe even a lifetime, all distilled and put together. The third way that you can upgrade your skills is to listen to audio programs in your car. The more you commit yourself to becoming the best person you can be, the more you like yourself and respect yourself, the more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist. The seventh discipline is the discipline of hard work. In the studies of self-made millionaires, again, they said, I didn't have better education, better talent, better knowledge, but I was willing to work harder than anyone else. So, the harder you work, the luckier you get. The harder you work, the more opportunities you have, the more doors open up to you, the more opportunities you see. If you look at an entrepreneurial startup, a business that's being run by somebody who's really driving forward, you'll find that the business owner is usually the first one there, works through the whole day, usually the last one to leave. The business owner usually works on Saturday and Sunday. At the end of the day, if you work three extra hours, start earlier, work harder, stay later, you'll add six hours of productive work to your day. Every hour of uninterrupted work when nobody's there translates into three hours of productivity when there are people around interrupting you. The seven personal qualities that assure success. 1. You must know yourself and know exactly what it is you want in life. Goal orientation is an essential requirement of all successful people. Most people starting their businesses compare themselves to millionaires, but once they reach millionaire status, they start to compare themselves to billionaires. What kept the person going for 25 years was the mission, the ability to focus. Very important, the ability to focus is the absolute critical requirement for success. A person who is focused, of average intelligence, can run circles around a person who is a genius, but doesn't have the focus. That's why people come out of universities with PhD degrees, with master's degrees, with sometimes 5, 10, 15 years of advanced education, and they can barely make a living. And other people quit school in grade 10 and grade 11, and they come out of school, and 5 or 10 years later, they have their own successful businesses. It's the ability to focus, the talents that you have, like an arrow, it'll hit specific targets. The only difference between a successful business person, or a person who's launched a business, and one who is not, is what the person who's launched the business has done. A person who is not, has not. 2. You must determine the price that you will have to pay in order to be successful, and then resolve to pay that price. For every single thing you want in life, there's a price. In a recent study, they found that in our society, you work 8 hours a day for survival. If you're only working 8 hours a day, you won't do anything more than survive. Every additional hour, whether you're working for yourself or someone else, is for success. So, it's very important that you keep putting in those additional hours, whether it's extra reading, extra study, extra work. 3. Self-responsibility. You have to accept 100% responsibility for your life and for everything that you are or ever will be. The opposite of accepting full responsibility is making excuses. And many people have said that making excuses is a disease that is fatal to success. In military academies, whenever you are confronted with a senior officer and your tie is askew or your jacket is not ironed, and you're only allowed to give one of three answers, yes sir, no sir, no excuses, you are not allowed to say any other word. That's how they train the top officers in the world because, as they know, nothing makes a person weaker or littler than always making excuses. No leader could be a leader if all they did was make excuses. Henry Ford once gave this motto for success. It's never complain, never explain. 4. You must be willing to work hard, to go the extra mile, and to always do more than you're paid for. One of the major secrets of success is always do more than you're paid for and then you will always be paid more than what you're getting now. 5. You must use your time well. Remember, this life is not a rehearsal for anything else in life. 
and all successful business people, all self-made millionaires, look upon their time as a resource, and they're very careful with it. They spend their time the way they would spend money. Successful people always look at time and money, and they realize that the two are interchangeable. Now here's another important point. You can invest time to get more money, you can invest money to get more time, and time and money put together equal happiness. Sex. The ability to spot trends and to be aware of changes and where the changes are going. In a recent Fortune magazine article on why companies fail, they say one of the major reasons for failure is the failure to anticipate how changes are going to affect their business and to go on doing things the same way. There are two obstacles to becoming everything you are capable of becoming. Obstacle number one is homeostasis. It means that you become rigid and fixed in the way that you think. It's a major reason that people don't grow because they get locked into what they've already done in the past, and they're very uneasy about doing something new. You're not willing to try new things. So, what you do, is by creating a big goal, you're forced out of your comfort zone because you cannot stay at your current level of performance and set a big goal for yourself. The goal forces you to think bigger, which is why we talked about putting a zero at the end of your income goal. Learn to see the opportunity that's right around you. It's easy to get busy and sort of blinded and just walk along and not see what's possible and what's available. You see, the average man believes some businesses are better than others instead of realizing the truth that there are no bad businesses. There are just those people who don't know enough to see the opportunities in the work they're in. It takes imagination, creative imagination, to know that diamonds don't look like diamonds in their rough state, nor does a pile of iron ore look like iron or steel. Great opportunities are constantly in every aspect of the work in which we now find ourselves. People who become outstanding at their work are those who see their work as an opportunity for growth and development, and who prepare themselves for the opportunities which surround them every day. If we will only have the wisdom and patience to intelligently and effectively explore the work in which we're now engaged, we'll usually find that it contains the riches we seek, whether they be financial or intangible or both. Imagine, if you will, a young person with dreams bigger than themselves, standing on the precipice of making a life-altering decision. This person, let's call them Alex, had faced one setback after another. They had a vision, a dream they were tirelessly working towards. But life, as it often does, threw curveball after curveball their way. Just when Alex thought they had a clear path forward, another obstacle emerged, seemingly more insurmountable than the last. Now most people might think this is where Alex's story ends, to coming to the pressure, giving up on their dream. But what if I told you it was just the beginning? What if I told you that despite the setbacks, the heartaches, and the countless times Alex was knocked down, they chose to press on? You see, Alex understood something very crucial about life. It's not the absence of obstacles that defines our path, but our response to them. This brings us to the heart of our discussion today. The sheer unyielding power of perseverance. Life, my friends, is a series of challenges, obstacles, and setbacks. It's not a question of if they will come, but when they do, how will you respond? Will you let them define you, or will you, like Alex, choose to press on? Think back to a moment in your own life when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable. Remember the feelings of despair, the moments of doubt. What did you do? Did you give up, or did you find within yourself the strength to press on? The truth is, each one of us has an Alex within us. Each one of us has faced moments where the easier choice would have been to give up. Yet here we are, because you chose to press on, to face your obstacles head on. But how do we cultivate this resilience, this ability to keep moving forward, no matter what life throws our way? Today, I want to share with you the principles that not only helped Alex, but have helped countless individuals around the world overcome their obstacles and achieve their dreams. These are the principles that can turn your biggest challenges into your greatest victories. And I ask you to keep an open mind, reflect on your own challenges, your own moments of doubt, and consider how applying these principles can change not just your approach to obstacles, but your entire life's trajectory. Not just as a speaker in an audience, but as fellow travelers on life's winding path, supporting and uplifting each other every step of the way, Together we'll uncover the secrets to turning our trials into triumphs and our hardships into stepping stones for success. Perseverance, a word we often hear but don't fully grasp its power until we're in the thick of our battles, trying to reach our goals. 
Think of perseverance as the inner flame that keeps burning even when the night is at its darkest. It's what makes the difference between dreams realized and dreams deferred. Let's talk about people who've embodied perseverance, those who've etched their names in the annals of history not because they never face challenges, but because they refuse to be defined by them. Consider Thomas Edison, who faced 10,000 failures before inventing the light bulb. Each failure brought him closer to success because he never saw these setbacks as reasons to give up, but as steps on the path to innovation. Or think of Abraham Lincoln, who faced defeat after defeat in his political life, only to become one of the most revered presidents of the United States. His story teaches us that failure is not the end, but an opportunity to grow stronger and more resilient. The psychological impact of choosing to move forward in the face of adversity is profound. When you decide to keep going, you're not just pushing past external obstacles, you're battling the internal naysayers telling you it's impossible. The moment you decide not to give up, you shift your mindset from one of defeat to one of potential impossibilities. This shift doesn't just help you overcome the current challenge, it transforms how you approach life's inevitable hurdles. Now pause for a moment and ask yourself, what could I achieve if I decided never to give up? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold before you if you chose to persevere, to keep that inner flame burning brightly, no matter how strong the winds of adversity blow. Perseverance is not about blindly pushing forward. It's about recognizing when to pivot, when to rest, and when to seek guidance. It's about learning from each setback and using that knowledge to build a stronger foundation for your dreams. So, as we navigate the complexities of our personal and professional lives, remember the power of perseverance. Remember that the difference between success and failure often comes down to who decides to keep going, who chooses to ignite their inner flame of perseverance, even when the odds seem stacked against them. Challenge yourselves to embody perseverance in our daily lives. Be the person who looks at challenges as opportunities, who sees failures as lessons, and who knows that the only true defeat comes from giving up. Commit to never giving up on our dreams, to pushing through the barriers, and to achieving the greatness we're all capable of. Remember, the only limit to what we can achieve lies in our willingness to persevere, to keep going no matter what happens in our journey. It's natural to encounter obstacles. These are not barriers designed to stop us, but rather stepping stones to greater success. Every hurdle we face is an opportunity in disguise, waiting to be uncovered. This perspective shift is crucial for transforming our challenges into our victories. Think about the common hurdles we face. Personal doubt, whispers in our ear telling us we're not good enough, or that our dreams are too far-fetched. External criticism, often from those we respect or care about, can dampen our spirit and derail our progress. But unforeseen circumstances, like a sudden job loss or a global event, can throw our plans into disarray. These challenges, while daunting, are not the end of our story, but the beginning of a new chapter. Why then do we turn these obstacles into opportunities? The first step is to embrace them. Instead of asking why me, we should ask what can this teach me? This simple question shifts our mindset from one of victimhood to one of growth and resilience. When faced with personal doubt, the strategy is to build self-efficacy. Set small, achievable goals for yourself. Each time you accomplish one, you chip away at the wall of doubt brick by brick. Celebrate these victories, no matter how small they are. They are proof of your capability and progress. Dealing with external criticism requires a balance of openness and self-assurance. Listen to what others have to say, but filter it through your own judgment. Constructive criticism can be a valuable tool for growth, but it's important to remain steadfast in your vision. Remember, the most successful people in history were often misunderstood or underestimated by their contemporaries. As for unforeseen circumstances, flexibility is key. Adapt your plans, but keep your eyes on the ultimate goal. Every setback is a lesson in disguise, teaching us to be more resilient, resourceful, and adaptable. Embrace change as an inevitable part of growth. Now consider this thought-provoking question. How can your biggest challenge today become your biggest victory tomorrow? Imagine looking back a year from now, having turned today's obstacle into a stepping stone for your success. What steps did you take? How did you transform this challenge into an opportunity? Remember, the size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. See obstacles not as dead ends, but as detours on the road to success. 
Embrace each challenge as an opportunity to grow stronger, wiser, and more resilient. Approach our obstacles with a new perspective. See them as the gifts that they are, opportunities to prove our mettle, to refine our strategies, and to come out on the other side not just as survivors, but as victors. The path to success is paved with obstacles, but with perseverance, resilience, and a shift in perspective. There's no limit to what we can achieve. The role of a positive mindset cannot be overstated. It's the beacon that guides us through the stormiest of seas, the light that illuminates our darkest moments. The importance of maintaining a positive outlook in the face of difficulty is akin to keeping our ship steady and on course, no matter how violent the waves may be. Cultivating positivity is not merely about seeing the glass as half full. It's about understanding that even the empty half is an opportunity to fill it with something new and potentially better. So, how do we foster this mindset? Let's start with gratitude practices. Begin each day by reflecting on what you are thankful for. It could be as simple as a sunny day, a good cup of coffee, or the smile of a loved one. This practice shifts our focus from what we lack to what we possess, enriching our lives with a sense of abundance. Positive affirmations are another powerful tool. Statements like, I am capable, I am resilient, and I am worthy of success, can transform our self-perception and our reality. By affirming our value and our potential, we set the foundation for incredible growth and achievement. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences is crucial. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose to be around those who uplift you, who see the greatness within you even when you might not see it yourself. These individuals not only inspire us but also challenge us to be our best selves. Now let's turn our attention to stories of transformation, of individuals who, by changing their attitudes, change their circumstances. Consider the story of a young artist who faced rejection after rejection. Each no could have been a reason to give up, but instead, she chose to see each rejection as a sign that she was one step closer to a yes. Today, her art is celebrated worldwide, a testament to the power of a positive mindset. Or think about the entrepreneur who, after a failed business venture, decided to view the failure not as a setback, but as a learning opportunity. This shift in perspective led him to start a new venture applying the lessons he learned from his failure. His company is now thriving, proof that a positive attitude can turn even the bitterest defeat into a sweet victory. So, what negative views do you hold that could be transformed into positive action? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold if you decided to view every challenge as an opportunity to learn. Consider how your life might change if you replace self-doubt with self-belief. The power of a positive mindset is not just about feeling good, it's about creating a reality that reflects our highest aspirations. It's about turning our cans into cans and our dreams into plans. By choosing positivity, we not only enhance our own lives but also inspire those around us to do the same. Commit to fostering a positive mindset. Embrace gratitude, affirm your worth, surround yourself with positivity, and transform your challenges into opportunities. Remember, the only limits that truly exist are those we place upon ourselves. With a positive mindset, there are no limits to what we can achieve. Resilience is the very backbone of perseverance, the invisible force that enables us to keep moving forward no matter what challenges or setbacks we encounter. It's the grit and determination that turn adversity into advantage, the quiet strength that transforms defeat into victory. Building resilience isn't just about bouncing back, it's about bouncing forward. It's about using every experience, good or bad, as a stepping stone towards your goals. One of the most powerful techniques for building resilience is embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Each time we stumble, we're presented with a unique chance to gather insights, to refine our strategies, and to come back stronger. Failure isn't the opposite of success. It's part of the success journey. Setting and adjusting goals is another crucial aspect of developing resilience. Goals give us direction, but the ability to adapt and modify those goals in response to changing circumstances is what keeps us on the path to achievement. Seeking support from mentors and peers is equally important. No one achieves greatness in isolation. The guidance, encouragement, and wisdom of those who have walked the path before us can be a tremendous source of strength and resilience. Similarly, the support of our peers who are journeying alongside us provides comfort and camaraderie that can lighten even the heaviest of loads. 
Reflect on your own experiences where resilience led to unexpected outcomes. Think about a time when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable, yet you persevered. What did you learn? How did that experience change your approach to future challenges? Remember, building resilience is not a one-time task. It's a continuous process of growth and learning. It requires us to face our fears, to step out of our comfort zones, and to embrace the unknown with open arms. Commit to building your resilience every day. View every challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow, to set and adjust your goals as needed, and to seek and offer support to those around you. Resilience is not just about surviving, it's about living our lives with purpose, passion, and perseverance, no matter what comes our way. Together, let's embrace the journey of building resilience, knowing that with each step we take, we're not just moving closer to our goals, we're also becoming stronger, wiser, and more capable of facing whatever the future holds. Let's remind ourselves that the true measure of our success is not just in the achievements we accumulate, but in the obstacles we overcome, and the resilience we build along the way. When faced with adversity, the natural response for many of us is to freeze, to become overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge at hand. However, the key to moving forward, to transforming these obstacles into stepping stones, lies in taking action. But not just any action. Deliberate, purposeful, and consistent action. The starting point for any journey of transformation begins with setting clear, measurable goals. It's like plotting a course on a map. You need to know your destination before you can chart the best route to get there. Your goals should be specific enough to provide direction, yet flexible enough to allow for the unexpected twists and turns that life inevitably throws our way. Once you have these goals in place, the next step is to break them down into actionable steps. This is where many of us falter, not because we lack the desire or the determination, but because the gap between where we are and where we want to be seems insurmountably wide. However, when we break down our goals into smaller manageable tasks, what once seemed impossible becomes achievable. Each task completed is a small victory, a step closer to our ultimate goal. The commitment to taking at least one small step each day towards your larger goal is about building momentum, one day at a time. Even on days when progress seems slow or non-existent, the act of moving forward, however slight, keeps the flame of progress alight. It's the compound effect in action. Small daily actions lead to significant long-term results. So, I pose to you a thought-provoking question. What's one step you can take today that you've been putting off? Is it making that phone call you've been dreading? Is it starting on the project you've been procrastinating on? Whatever it is, commit to taking that step today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today. It's remarkable how taking even the smallest action can begin to shift our mindset from one of paralysis to one of empowerment. In taking action, it's also important to anticipate setbacks. They are not signs of failure, but rather part of the process of achievement. When faced with a setback, Take a moment to reassess, adjust your plan if necessary, and then press on with renewed determination. Remember, the journey towards any worthwhile goal is rarely a straight line. It's full of detours, roadblocks, and unexpected challenges. However, it's not the presence of these obstacles that determines our success, but our response to them. So, let's not just dream about the lives we want to lead. Let's take the actions necessary to make those dreams a reality. Let's set our goals break them down into actionable steps, and commit to taking daily action towards achieving them. Let's build the resilience to bounce back from setbacks and the flexibility to adjust our plans as needed. Remember, every great achievement begins with the decision to try. To move forward in the face of adversity is to embrace the possibility of what could be rather than being constrained by what is. It's to understand that the power to change our circumstances lies not in waiting for the perfect moment, but in taking action, however small, at every opportunity. Take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon today. We've acknowledged the inevitability of obstacles in our path, the transformative power of a positive mindset, the essential process of building resilience, and the undeniable importance of taking action. Consider the story of a small seed that finds itself buried deep under the soil. To the seed, the weight of the earth above might seem like an insurmountable obstacle. Driven by an innate desire to reach the sunlight, this tiny seed doesn't possess the strength to move the earth in one grand gesture. Instead, it grows bit by bit, day by day, facing resistance, 
breaking through barriers, and overcoming challenges, until one day, it breaks through the surface into the sunlight. The seed, once buried and seemingly defeated by its circumstances, transforms into a strong, resilient tree, standing tall and proud. This story is a metaphor for our own lives. Like the seed, we too face obstacles that seem to bury us, challenges that appear to block our path to the sunlight. But it is in these moments that our true strength is forged. By maintaining a positive mindset, by building our resilience, and by taking action, no matter how small, we can overcome the barriers that stand in our way. So, I encourage you to apply these principles to your own life. Start with a single step, one small action towards your goal. Embrace the challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. Surround yourself with positivity. Seek out mentors and peers who uplift you. And remember, every day is a chance to move closer to your dream. As we part ways, I leave you with one final thought-provoking question. Imagine where you could be a year from now if you refuse to let challenges stop you. What does that future look like? Picture it, believe in it, and then take the steps to make it a reality. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let that step be your commitment today to move forward, to grow, and to achieve the success you've always dreamed of. The path may not be easy, but the destination is worth every challenge, every setback, and every moment of doubt. As you go forward, carry with you the knowledge that within you lies the strength, the resilience, and the power to change your life. The only question that remains is, what will you do with that power? Today, I want to focus on the fundamental aspect of presenting our best selves in the journey of life. It's common to think that the path to success is always smooth, and every step we take leads us forward without any setbacks. However, let's be honest with ourselves. Life rarely unfolds in such a straightforward manner. The truth, although sometimes difficult to accept, is that setbacks and failures are not just occasional occurrences. They are integral to our journey. Allow me to share a personal story with you. A few years ago, I encountered a setback that deeply impacted my professional life. I had invested all my time, money, and energy into a venture that I believed would undoubtedly succeed. Yet despite my best efforts, it failed. I remember sitting in my office late one night, staring into the darkness, feeling a weight of defeat I had never known. It felt as though the world had stopped believing in me, and worse yet, I had stopped believing in myself. But here's the thing, feeling defeated is not the end of the story, it's merely a chapter. It's what we do when faced with these chapters that defines our path. This brings me to the heart of what I want to share with you today. Resilience and perseverance are not just buzzwords. They are the very essence of overcoming failures. It's not about never falling. It's about how we choose to rise after we fall. Now let me ask you. Have you ever faced a moment in your life where everything you had worked for seemed to crumble before your eyes? What did you do in that moment? Did you let it define you? Or did you see it as an opportunity to learn, grow, and push forward? The beauty of resilience is that it's not a trait you're born with. It's one you develop. It's a decision to get up when life knocks you down, to learn from the experiences that didn't go your way, and to keep moving forward with the knowledge that each setback is a setup for a greater comeback. So how do we cultivate this resilience? How do we ensure that we're not only able to face our failures, but also use them as stepping stones to greater success? The first step is to recognize that failure is not a reflection of your worth but a universal experience that holds valuable lessons for those willing to learn. Think back to a time when you overcame something you initially thought was insurmountable. What did that feel like? Hold on to that feeling because it's proof that you have what it takes to rise above, no matter how many times you fall. I remember, the best side isn't about hiding your failures. It's about showcasing your ability to overcome them. It's about demonstrating resilience and perseverance in the face of adversity. And most importantly, it's about understanding that the path to success is a mosaic of experiences, both good and bad, that shape us into individuals capable of achieving greatness. Woven with the threads of experiences, aspirations and dreams, there lies a universal thread common to all. This inevitable facet of existence, often shrouded in negative connotations, is not a marker of personal worth, nor a signpost of inadequacy. Rather, it's a testament to the courage to strive to reach, and sometimes to fall short. 
It's essential to grasp this intrinsic aspect of failure. It is a shared human experience, not an isolated incident that befalls the unlucky few. Every individual who has dared to dream, to aspire beyond the visible horizon, has encountered failure. It is as inevitable as the changing of seasons. Yet despite its universality, society often casts failure in a harsh light. There exists a stigma around falling, a silent yet potent societal pressure that equates falling with weakness, with losing. This perception permeates through the fabric of our interactions, shaping how we view ourselves and others in moments of vulnerability. The fear of failure then becomes not just a personal battle, but a societal one, where the act of falling is seen as something to be avoided at all costs, rather than embraced as part of the learning process. It's crucial, therefore, to redefine our collective understanding of failure, to shift the narrative from one of defeat to one of opportunity, growth, and resilience. This redefinition begins with each one of us, in how we treat our failures and those of others. By changing our perspective, we can change the culture around failure, transforming it from a source of shame to a wellspring of insight and innovation. Imagine a world where failure is not met with judgment, but with curiosity, where the question is not, why did you fail, but what did you learn? Pause for a moment and reflect. Think back to your most recent setback. Recall the initial sting of disappointment, perhaps even the shadow of doubt that crossed your mind. How did you react? Did you see it as a reflection of your worth or as an opportunity to grow? This reflection is not just an exercise in introspection, but a step towards embracing failure as an integral part of your journey. The true measure of our strength lies not in how we avoid falling, but in how we rise after we fall. It's an understanding that every setback, every failure, carries within it the seeds of wisdom and growth. When we start to view failure through this lens, we empower ourselves to learn, to adapt, and to persevere as we navigate through our own stories of trial and triumph. The understanding that failure is not the antithesis of success, but a stepping stone towards it. Hold on to the knowledge that our worth is not defined by how many times we fall, but by how many times we stand back up, fortified by the lessons learned. There's a concept that stands as a beacon of hope, a force so potent yet so understated. Imagine resilience as the very fabric of our being, a material that no matter how stretched or compressed, always returns to its original shape. It's our ability to bounce back from the adversities and challenges that life invariably throws our way. Our innate capacity to emerge from difficulties not just unscathed but stronger, wiser, and more determined. Now you might wonder, how does one cultivate this remarkable quality? How do we ensure that when the storms of life hit, we're not just enduring but thriving, using these challenges as catalysts for growth? The journey to building resilience is both simple and complex, woven from the threads of mindset shifts, self-care, and realistic expectations. Start with our mindset, the lens through which we view the world around us. It's about shifting our perspective from seeing challenges as insurmountable obstacles to viewing them as opportunities for growth. This doesn't mean dismissing the pain or difficulty of these situations, but rather acknowledging them and asking, what can I learn from this? It's about cultivating a mindset of growth where every setback is a setup for a comeback. Equally important is the practice of self-care, the art of nurturing our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. It's about recognizing that to weather the storms, we need to be in our best shape, and that means taking care of ourselves. It could be as simple as ensuring we get enough sleep, eat nourishing foods, or engage in physical activity. It's about giving ourselves permission to rest, to recharge, and to seek support when needed. Setting realistic expectations plays a crucial role in building resilience. It's about understanding that while we may strive for excellence, Perfection is an unattainable and often destructive goal. It's about setting goals that challenge us but are within the realm of possibility and understanding that sometimes, despite our best efforts, we may fall short, and that's okay. It's not about lowering our standards, but about setting ourselves up for success by recognizing our limits and working within them. Let me share a personal story that embodies the essence of resilience. There was a time in my life when I faced a profound setback, a project I had poured my heart and soul into fell apart. The disappointment was palpable, the sense of failure overwhelming. In the aftermath, I found myself at a crossroads, 
I could either let this defeat define me or use it as a stepping stone. I chose the latter. The journey wasn't easy. It required me to dig deep, to confront my fears and insecurities. I had to shift my mindset to view this failure not as an endpoint, but as part of the process. I focused on taking care of myself, ensuring that I was mentally, physically, and emotionally equipped to tackle the challenges ahead. I set new, realistic goals, understanding that while the path might be different from what I had envisioned, it was still leading me towards my ultimate destination. This experience, though painful, taught me invaluable lessons about resilience, about the incredible power we all possess to overcome adversity. It showed me that resilience is not just about surviving, but about thriving, about using our challenges as catalysts for growth and transformation. As we navigate the complexities of life, remember that resilience is within each of us, waiting to be nurtured and cultivated. Approach challenges with a mindset of growth, take care of ourselves, and set realistic expectations. And when we find ourselves faced with setbacks, remember that these are not the end of our story, but an essential part of our journey. Opportunities to demonstrate our resilience and emerge stronger than before. Each of us plays a role, defined by the script of our choices, actions, and yes, our failures. But let me share with you a perspective that has the power to transform the very essence of how we view setbacks. Imagine, if you will, that each failure we encounter is not a blockade, but a disguised lesson. Hidden guideposts pointing us toward paths we might never have explored. Strengths we didn't know we possessed. And insights that can propel us forward in ways we hadn't imagined. The failures that we so often dread and try to avoid are, in reality, cloaked lessons. Opportunities masquerading as obstacles, waiting for us to uncover the wisdom. They hold, but to unlock these lessons, we must first shift our mindset. We must look beyond the immediate pain and disappointment of failure to see the potential growth and learning it offers. This shift is not just beneficial. It's essential for anyone aiming to achieve great things. It requires us to adopt a mindset of adaptability, to be fluid and flexible in the face of change, and to view each setback not as a final verdict on our capabilities, but as a stepping stone to greater achievements. Consider for a moment the process of learning to ride a bike. The falls, the scrapes, they're all part of the journey. With each fall, we learn something new about balance, about speed, about the importance of persistence. Without those initial failures, the joy of finally gliding effortlessly on two wheels would never be realized. The same principle applies to every facet of our lives. Each failure brings with it invaluable lessons that, once embraced, can illuminate our path forward. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the essence of adaptability and growth. To grow from failure, we must be willing to adapt, to reassess our strategies, and to be open to new possibilities. This adaptability, this flexibility in thought and action, is what allows us to navigate the unpredictable waters of life. It enables us to take the lessons learned from each setback and apply them to future endeavors, to adjust our sails when the winds of circumstance shift unexpectedly. But growth from failure is not a solitary journey, it's a collective human experience, and there's incredible power in sharing our stories of setbacks and resilience. So, I invite you now to turn to the person next to you, and briefly share a lesson you've learned from a past failure. Take a moment to do this, and as you share your story, listen to theirs. You'll find that in sharing our vulnerabilities, we discover our shared strength. I hope you found that exchange enlightening. Sharing our experiences of failure and growth not only helps us feel less alone in our struggles, but also reminds us of the common thread of resilience that binds us all. It highlights the importance of a growth mindset, of viewing each failure not as an endpoint, but as a catalyst for development, for re-evaluation, and for renewed effort. Let me remind you that the journey toward achieving our dreams is often a patchwork of successes and failures. Each piece, no matter how seemingly insignificant or painful, adds depth color, and texture to the masterpiece that is our life. The failures we endure are not mere stumbling blocks but stepping stones, each one a lesson in disguise, teaching us, guiding us, and preparing us for the successes that lie ahead. Remember, the power to learn from failure, to adapt, grow, and ultimately succeed, lies within each of us. It's a choice we make, a perspective we adopt, and a journey we undertake armed with the wisdom gleaned from every fall. So embrace our failures, uncover the lessons they hold, 
and move forward with the confidence that in the grand narrative of our lives, every setback is an opportunity for growth, and every failure a disguised guidepost leading us toward our greatest achievements, where each of us is both the author and the protagonist of our own story. There comes a moment, a defining moment, when we stand at the crossroads of what has been and what could be. It's in these moments, often birthed from the ashes of our failures, that we are presented with a golden opportunity, the chance to start anew. Imagine holding in your hands a blank page, an untouched canvas upon which you can paint the dreams of tomorrow without being tethered to the setbacks of yesterday. This is the beauty of embracing new beginnings. It's the understanding that every day, every moment offers us a fresh start, a chance to redefine our journey and move closer to our aspirations. But how do we seize these new beginnings? How do we ensure that this fresh start propels us toward our goals and not back into the cycle of past mistakes? The answer lies in the power of setting actionable goals. I'm talking about smart goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This isn't just a catchy acronym, it's a roadmap to success. It's about taking those lessons learned from past failures and using them to construct goals that are not just dreams but destinations. Imagine setting a goal so clear, so well-defined that you can almost touch it, see it, feel it. That's the kind of goal that moves you, that pulls you forward even when the path gets steep. But setting goals is just the beginning. The journey toward achieving them is where the true challenge lies. It's in staying the course, maintaining focus and motivation, despite the obstacles that will undoubtedly arise. And they will arise. The path to success is seldom a straight line. It's fraught with detours, roadblocks, and unexpected storms. So how do we stay the course? How do we keep our eyes on the horizon when the seas around us are churning? First and foremost, it's about belief. Self-belief. It's about nurturing that inner conviction that you have what it takes to achieve your goals, no matter how lofty or far-fetched they may seem to others. This belief is the anchor that holds you steady, the compass that guides you through the stormiest of seas. But even the strongest of ships needs a crew, and that's where the importance of support systems comes into play. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who support your dreams, and who are there to lend a hand, a word of encouragement, or a listening ear when needed. These are the people who will celebrate your victories and help you rise when you fall. They're an integral part of your journey, a reminder that you're not alone in your quest for success. And when the obstacles seem insurmountable, when the weight of your goals feels too heavy to bear, remember why you started. Reflect on the progress you've made, no matter how small, and let that fuel your determination to press on. Celebrate every milestone, every step forward, for these are the tangible markers of your perseverance. Moving forward with courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of it. It is the decision to take the first step and then the next, armed with the lessons of the past, the clarity of well-defined goals, and an unwavering belief in your ability to overcome. It is the understanding that setbacks are not the end of the road, but signs that guide us toward our final destination. Commit to accepting each failure as a stepping stone. Set goals that challenge and inspire you, and stay the course with unwavering focus and determination. Let's move forward not with panic, but with courage, knowing that we have the power to create our destiny, to turn our dreams into reality. I want to take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon, exploring the realms of resilience, the invaluable lessons tucked within our failures, and the unwavering courage that propels us forward. The essence of what we've discussed isn't just about overcoming obstacles, but about transforming our perspective to see setbacks not as barriers, but as gateways to growth and self-discovery. Let me share with you a story that resonates deeply with the message we've woven today. There was once a young entrepreneur whose first venture failed spectacularly. Faced with mounting debts and a tarnished reputation, the path ahead seemed bleak. Yet, instead of allowing this failure to define his journey, he chose to see it as a profound learning opportunity. He meticulously analyzed where things went wrong, took to heart the lessons learned, and with a resilience born from his setback, he embarked on a new venture. This time, armed with the wisdom of his past failures, he succeeded beyond his wildest dreams. Today he stands as a testament to the power of embracing failure, not as the end, but as the catalyst for greater achievements. This story mirrors the message I hope you carry with you today. The understanding that each setback, each stumble, is not a mark of defeat, 
but a stepping stone toward your grandest aspirations. It is through the fires of our failures that our resilience is forged, giving us the strength to rise time and again with a courage that is undeterred by the specter of past defeats. Look at your next blow with a new lens. See it not as a defeat but as an opportunity to grow, refine your perspective, and get closer to your dreams. Take a lesson from today, whether it's the power of resilience, the gift of learning from failure, or the courage to keep going, and apply it to your life. It is the light that guides you through the storms, the anchor that keeps you steadfast amid the waves of doubt and fear. I want to express my deepest gratitude for the privilege of your time, and for your openness to embracing a new perspective on failure and resilience. Your presence here is a testament to your commitment to personal growth and to the journey of self-improvement that lies ahead. Remember, the path to success is rarely a straight line. It's a mosaic of experiences colored by our triumphs and our setbacks, each one contributing to the masterpiece that is our life. Thank you for allowing me to share this journey with you. As you step into the future armed with the lessons of today, remember that within you lies an unstoppable force, a resilience that can weather any storm a capacity to learn from every setback, and a courage that propels you forward undaunted by the challenges that lie ahead. Let's move forward not with trepidation, but with the confidence of knowing that we are equipped to face whatever comes our way. Together let's embrace the journey, setbacks and all, and march toward our destinies with resilience, wisdom, and unwavering courage. Thank you.